it all goes in loops. That's what I find. Life goes up and down and events are happening. Sickness are coming, jobs come and go and job security is an illusion. And then there's loss. We're all going to face loss in our family and friends. And in fact, I lost one of my good mates this week to cancer. And this is going to keep going. In this podcast episode, I'm lucky enough to be joined by Dad, top Ironman triathlete and the author of the international bestseller, Executive Loneliness, Nick Johnson. If like me or someone that struggles with the mental health, yes, I know it's a pain in the ass, but you are not alone. I think you, you touched on something which is important. We all need coping strategies. There's five things I tend to do every day. I have a cold shower. I do some meditation. I do some creative work, which is helpful because I write for a couple of articles. But I also, I train Brazilian jiu-jitsu. And I've been doing it for eight years. I'm very average at it. But I really enjoy it. More so for what it gives me. There's five or six other men in their 40s, nearly 50s. And actually... You can't underestimate, as you said, the power of actually being out face to face with people, ideally outside in the elements, going back to basics. And if you make that five things you do every day, it, it's a game changer. It really is. Yes, I absolutely agree with you. It's great for fathers to do it together to discuss what it means about fatherhood. And actually a topic we had on in our men's group last week, and we typically have a theme every week for people just to come a bit prepared. It was about masculinity. And that was the first time in my life that I've been in a conversation where we're talking about what it does, does it mean to be a man and what is masculinity or what is manhood and have uh, healthy conversations about this. I think masculinity is definitely a buzz topic at the moment. I think masculinity is in crisis to an extent because I, I don't think men really know what society wants or expects us to be. There's so many scenarios like mine, for example, where actually I'm the one, we have three children. I'm the one that does the drop-offs and the pickups in school because of the nature of my work. I work from home. But a lot of men struggle with that. And I'll be honest, when, it, when I first started, it's my wife that goes to work and I'm the one that stays home. You kind of have to reinvent yourself. That wasn't what my dad did. My dad went, left the house at six in the morning and came back at six in the evening. My mother was, was the homekeeper and looked after the children. So I think certainly our generation are having that massive kind of like reinvention of what it is to be a man and what men can do and what's socially acceptable. But it's not easy. I also think the world and to an extent, women often give men mixed messages of we really want nice, sensitive, loving men. Yes, I agree with that. But I also think that in some capacity, that's still not wildly accepted. I think you, you have to be sensitive and in touch with the feelings, but there's also an expectation that you will provide and you'll protect. And juggling those two things is difficult because they're not the same thing. Absolutely. I agree with you. And as I mentioned before, I live and work in Asia where there's older values. The generations are perhaps a little bit behind. and. It's certainly true that the man is the provider and in some religions, for example, you even have to sign a contract that you are responsible for the housing and to provide food for the family. That's even part of a marriage agreement, uh, at least in some countries where I'm living and working. Um, some societies and countries might seem that as a bit behind the times, but it's getting the balance, isn't it? And I think groups like the, the one you've talked about I think what will be really helpful is if you are, say, in a position where you suddenly your job has changed and you're either not the main breadwinner or you, and you're feeling a bit unsure about that, just talking to another man who may be six months ahead of where you are now just might go, actually, it's totally not a problem. All this anxiety is in my head. And I, I think that's a support network that you can really only get from other men. I don't think you can get it from women or your, your wife. I just don't think you can. Um, it's funny you talked about cycling a few years ago for a charity thing, me and two friends cycled from Land's End to John O'Groats, which is literally the tip of Cornwall in Britain. It's the length of the British Isles. And it was one of the best things I ever did. It was two weeks and not only was it great exercise and I got, I really got to see my own country, but just, I really got to know my friends in a way that I probably wouldn't have, I didn't know before. So I think making the effort to actually get to know other men. Uh, don't be afraid to have those conversations because there's a strong chance that the other people are talking to are feeling the same way. 
Absolutely. And it all goes in loops. That's what I find. Life goes up and down and events are happening. Sickness are coming, jobs come and go and job security is an illusion. And then there's loss. We're all going to face loss in our family and friends. And in fact, I lost one of my good mates this week to cancer. And this is going to keep going. And this week, maybe it's me who needs support. Next week, it's another of my friends. So if we just keep the conversations open, are there to support each other and give that sympathy, then we are doing each other's favors. And it's, it's about give and take the whole way. Yeah. Well, well I'm, first, I'm really sorry to hear about the loss of your friend. That's really sad. And I will certainly, if you're happy for me to, I'd like to signpost your group to people listening to my podcast, which I'll do in the show notes, because I don't think there's enough of this. Yes, a, a, a podcast might be great, but if people aren't connecting like we, like you and me are connecting now. I think if you said, I mean, how many men do you tend to have in the group? Uh, about 16, 17, because if we are 16, 17, then every week, perhaps it's eight to 10, half of the group are available yeah. to shop. And that's a nice conversation. And there's also, and it's, you might not get on you know, it might, with everyone in the group, but there'll be someone in the group that resonates with something you're saying or will have a perspective that is useful and you need to hear. And you have no idea how much of a coping strategy that your group may be for those men. Absolutely. And there's nothing better than the feeling of being of service as well. It still stops the self-pity. We feel that we are of use. Uh, if someone is in self-pity, the best way to break that is, is really to go out and help someone else. And I, I find that is amazing. And that's the fact that I've been to four recovery weekends this week, which I'm not every week, most weeks it's one or two. It means that I'm just feeling much better than if I've been, if I've been to one and two, because I've been there, I've been helping others and doing good service. I really hope you got something for this podcast and to find out more about the work that Nick does and to contact him, visit his website. I'll put the link in the show notes. All right, wherever you are in the world, you're okay. Take care. Hey, Dad, here's a word from our sponsor. Do you miss having something interesting to read in those very odd five-minute breaks from the trench warfare that can be family life? If so, check out www.swifthalf.com. Sign up to their newsletter for jaw-dropping news, some light-hearted nonsense, exclusive offers, and guides.